Red FM is at Jaipur Literature Festival 2022. My name is Kavir and I have with me very lovely Ira. Hi, how are you Ira? Hi Kavir, I'm good, thank you. First of all, how has been the experience of Jail? I know it's a very, you know, asked again and again the kind of question that are bhai kitni baar poochoge but still I want to know how is the ambience did you how, how are you feeling about jail well you know it's a particularly relevant question today because we're doing this after a break of 2 years uh, yes. many of us are back in a uh, physical environment after more than 2 years so it is very special in that sense uh, and what has been nice is meeting readers because we've been sort of cut off from isolated from readers uh, we don't get to get uh, to meet people in physical form hear their thoughts get them to give you feedback uh, so it's been really really nice uh, from that point of view especially less the bhashan than all that we've been doing on zoom also so that's <laughs> no big deal but meeting people has been so refreshing and really like a breath of fresh air on that note actually my team was also discussing this that you know you wrote uh, mahabharata from draupadi's point of view uh, and they were like yeah when you go and speak to ira please ask her like Uh, do you think that you know today's women in 2022 spe specifically indian women do do you think that they can draw any kind of inspiration when it comes to women empowerment when we look at all these uh religious figures or uh, mythological fig figures well you know i think it's very essential because we may not uh, even realize it um, in a concrete way but actually we are exposed to many of these examples and our socializing as women as young girls and women growing up in india happens through the epics so often a grandmother or grandparent somebody will sit down and tell us some example from the epic and say oh Uh, remember not to do this thing. Don't laugh too loudly. Look what happened to Draupadi when she laughed yes. at somebody. So little by little, these influences come into our life, and mostly they serve to restrict the actions of women. Or we'll be told that keep a Lakshman Rekha in your life. Don't cross this path. You know. Yeah. Recently, even uh, a minister told women who college-going women that you are complaining about uh, you know somebody coming into your hostel at night, but you should maintain that Lakshman Rekha. Mm -hmm. And a 21st century, a minister is using Lakshman Rekha. So often, these terms from the epic are used today, but they used in a in a manner which kind of controls women. So I feel that we need to push back that narrative and question it and say what actually happened. You know, what, why did Draupadi laugh? What made her laugh? And why was she so wrong to laugh? So I. Do do want the these women to be as an example to us but with fresh eyes so we need to reexamine critically the text and not let just the patriarchy tell us how we should interpret them and how we should behave so it's a kind of a dual weapon if you if you you know know what yeah, i mean yeah it is yeah. yeah it is very very valid point because if i look at uh, you know whatever i've been living through and you know uh, small towns big towns or whatever but this particular point that you made that you know how culturally these ladies have always been used as a uh, caution cautionary like, you know, tale yes like listen yeah. don't do this you remember what happened yeah. with yeah. her yeah so that's that's an interesting point of mm -hmm. view and one more thing that you've just written is uh, the great akbar was there any resistance online that hey why are you trying to make make over somebody's image and or on the other side you know there is always uh, people are always online trying to uh, distort the facts yes. about history yeah so what is your take a on yeah. the, did you get any resistance being yeah. a woman yeah. and secondly what do you think it's going to be like do you think you know intellectuals like yourself or the writers um, will be able to kind of uh, uh, repair the damage which is done by distorted facts yeah so that these are really excellent points and um, where akbar is concerned Uh, I think he remains at least when I was writing him so I started researching but 4 5 years ago before the book could come out at at least at that time he was still one of these talismanic figures for Indian people he was still mm. considered a good muslim in quotes okay. he was somebody that people were willing to study and understand his life because it was considered that he understood the country in its complexities he did not try to unnecessarily subdue the hindus if you know you know yeah. what i mean yeah. so i didn't get much pushback at that time since then i find that nowadays it's become a little more tricky people seem to be more divisive over this issue of even akbar who used to be somebody above all this you see uh and because of this issue of history becoming so binary good and bad yes, white and black yes, right yes. the way we are taught it now even in school the, how the curriculum is being revised so i think it's becoming increasingly important for writers like myself there are many of them around also you know there's manu pillai there's rana and there's so many people 
who are taking history into the popular space. And I think it's absolutely crucial to be able to fill in the gaps of what our history really is so that it doesn't remain a binary, cautionary tale of this is what we accept and nothing else. Young writers uh, who are probably or men and women, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of men who want uh, to write uh, closely to the subjects that you are involved in, yeah. uh, probably from a women's perspective or uh, who are the true feminist. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, do you have anything to say to them as to how they might be approaching the subject? Uh, and do you think that sometimes it is, it's, it happens with any social movement, right? Yeah. It, it, it gets either way too exaggerated yeah. or uh, the values, they go in the wrong direction. True. What, what would you like to tell those guys and girls who are probably uh, approaching this subject through their art form, not just writing yeah. probably music, yeah. probably movies. So what, what do you like to just tell them? Well, you know, I would tell them to go for it because I think there is a momentum building uh, and this is not just India based, it's global. I think there's a realization that women, at least, uh, have been written out of all narratives and, you know, in, in all fields, whether it's in the sciences, in the music, uh, their contributions have been either whitewashed completely or appropriated by male relatives. You know, that has happened around the world mm. through the mm. centuries. Mm. Uh, but there is kind of like almost a momentum happening. There is, you know, a, a sort of fiction building up that people are now willing to counter that narrative and there's more and more interest in that. So I do see this building. So any young person who wants to take this up in whatever field, as you say, through dance or music or whatever, I would really tell them to go for it because in India at least it has not even begun to be explored. So there's a lot of potential and they can really make their mark by finding you know, little, little known sources of information and building on that and bringing it out to a general public. Brilliant. So that is Red FM at the Jaipur Literature Fest. I have with me very passionate, very happy era, and it's it's been fun chatting with you. Fun to talk and, to you. Yeah, and we're gonna get some more uh, information about writers. We're gonna go and talk to them. So stay tuned. This is exclusively on Red FM at Jaipur Literature Fest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.